Throughout my presidency, Laura and I met with democratic activists, defenders of religious freedom, and families of political prisoners. The Bush Institute will continue this cause by supporting advocates of freedom around the globe. As a first step, we will assemble a freedom collection, a repository of video histories and memoirs and documents from democratic activists. The freedom collection will be online for the world to see. Among the leaders who have agreed to participate are former President Václav Havel of the Czech Republic, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf of Liberia, Mohsen Sazagara, the founder of Iran's Revolutionary Guard, who became an advocate for democratic change, Kang Shol Wan, who spent 10 years in a North Korean gulag and authored the book Aquariums of Pyongyang. With the Freedom Collection, the Bush Institute will send a message to dissidents and underground preachers and political prisoners around the world. We hear your voice, and as you stand for your freedom, free people will stand with you. I'm also pleased to announce the Bush Institute's first fellow in human freedom, Oscar Morales Guevara. For decades, Oscar and his fellow Colombians suffered under the FARC, a brutal narco-terrorist network. As a young engineer, Oscar used Facebook to launch a movement called One Million Voices Against the FARC. A month later, more than 12 million people in 40 countries turned out for rallies to proclaim No Mas FARC. Thanks to enterprising citizens like Oscar and the steady, strong leadership of Colombian President, President Alvaro Uribe, the FARC is in retreat and the Colombian people are better off. As part of his fellowship, Oscar will organize a conference that brings together cyber dissidents from around the world to share lessons on using the Internet to promote democratic change. The Institute's fourth area of focus will be economic growth. I believe the role of government is not to create wealth, but to create the conditions that allow entrepreneurs and innovators to thrive. I believe in the power of free enterprise which made the decision I faced last fall one of the most difficult of my presidency. I went against my free market instincts and approved a temporary government intervention to unfreeze the credit markets so that we could avoid a major global depression. As the world recovers, we're going to face the temptation to replace the risk and reward model of the private sector with the blunt instruments of government spending and control. History shows that the greater threat to prosperity is not too little government involvement, but too much. The Bush Institute will devote itself to promoting economic growth at home and abroad. One of our first projects will be to, be, will be to convene a task force of leading economists to promote free trade.